I believe that uh, to be a fulfilled person and a complete person, you have to have goals. And I believe they can be short-term goals and then take another one. But I do think you have to have something going for you or life just isn't uh, interesting enough. I always thought that uh, I would be wise by the time I'm this age and actually it's otherwise. You just never are wise. <laughs> There's always something else you have to solve. There's always some other step you have to take. Art is just like religion. There's no absolute. No one reaches it. There's not one best artist in the United States or the world. Everyone has a gift to give, and there's no absolutes. There are absolutely no absolutes in excellence. I grew up in a home where everyone had a, or my parents felt that everyone should have a goal. And my father uh, had the most uh, influence on me in this because uh, he said there were six children, and he would tell us from time to time that he felt he had been called to the ministry and that he hadn't listened and that he had not only blindsided God, but he had missed his true opportunity. And he urged us to be aware, or even to look for our calling, that all of us would be called to something. So I felt that was my calling, I truly did. When I realized that I would remain a historical painter, a sight painter, and I have pursued it. I have always had a purpose since I was 12 years old. I knew I would be an artist, and before I left high school, I was absolutely convinced that I had a mission. I didn't know what it was, I didn't know it was in art, but I knew that I had something to fulfill in my life. And as the time unfolded, once I got into the assignments of doing all these books I did on American history for my centennial, by the end of that time, I knew that this is the route that I would follow. It's important to have a goal till the day you leave this planet. If you don't have, what do you have? Sometimes I'm called to speak to young artists as they're graduating or maybe an art class that they're having trouble in. And uh, of course they always want to know how to sell. And uh, I, I talk to them about networking and it's a, a great life, a creative life is a great life. And I said, but you know, what you have to understand as you're going through school or whatever you're preparing yourself for, besides creating the painting, you're going to have to create the customer. They're not waiting for you. And how long does that take, they ask? I said, it takes about 10 years to become a really fine finished artist. And then you're still on the way up. It's true. I've been painting historical sites since 1971. Having chosen to become an historical painter and artist, I am uh, not permitted to uh, indulge myself. I cannot paint just out of my subconscious because it's there and I'm going to show this to people and see if they like it because I have to be understandable. And that was a trade-off that I actually made, uh, was aware of at the time. But I thought the resources I was gaining in understanding my country and the love of country and what we stand for, that it was something I could pass on the paintings I've done and kept here, there are 80 in my foundation, 250 altogether, even more than that. This is a, a visual, pictorial record of our country. I didn't know I would be, have enough commissions to fuel this and keep this together. So, um, and largely, I have worked to support myself and to support my collection. It has to be cared for. Art is a, uh, it's the core of our culture. It's the core of every, everyone, even those who, who are not aware. The culture is everything for the country. Take your culture away, you'd have nothing left. For me, and the way I was raised, and the way I've tuned myself, and the way I've directed myself all these years, I can't imagine not having a goal. So that's kind of my philosophy. Of, it is my philosophy of life.